In 1993, blonde bombshell Anna Nicole Smith became a household name after appearing in the pages of Playboy magazine and being named Playmate of the Year. A year later, she made front page news once again when she married 89 year old oil tycoon J. Howard Marshall. After Marshall died just 13 months into their marriage, Smith's own life began to deteriorate as well. Not only did she develop a drug addiction, but her son would tragically die just three days after she had given birth to her new new baby girl from an overdose of his own. Then Anna Nicole herself would tragically pass away shortly after at the age of just 39. It's now been over 15 years since her passing and Netflix has released a brand new documentary titled Anna Nicole Smith, You Don't Know Me, which includes shocking interviews with her family, friends, and employees while painting the star's struggle with substance abuse as one that turned her into a quote unquote manipulative, egotistical monster. One of those friends is Missy Byram who first met Anna Nicole at a strip club where both of those women worked. Missy claims to have had a secret love affair with Anna when they were living together in the giant six bedroom estate that Howard bought for Anna in the early 90s. Anna Nicole Smith first met Howard Marshall while working at that same strip club in 1981. He then began showering her with lavish presents in an attempt to woo her, one of which was this mansion in the city of Cypress, Texas, boasting amenities like stables, a basketball courts, a pool, and a guest house conceivably for Missy. Oh, Howard only knew. Built in 1988, this 6,311 square foot two-story home comes equipped with a circular driveway that features the added bonus of having LED lighting. Inside the front foyer offers slate floors as well as one of the home's multiple wrought iron staircases that leads upstairs to the bedroom wing. Not far from there is the formal living area with its wood-burning fireplace and complemented by some very trendy furniture. The family room includes includes yet another fireplace because one simply isn't enough while also overlooking a private outdoor courtyard and the nearby swimming pool. Just around the corner from the family room is the home's kitchen, which connects to bar seating and a cute little breakfast nook which includes views of the pool as well. Recently updated, this cooking space now includes granite countertops, stone floors, and plenty of stainless steel appliances. If formal dining is more your thing, this home can handle that as well thanks to its spectacular dining room with its low hanging chandelier, table big enough for eight, and nearby bar. Elsewhere on the main floor is a study that includes a ton of built in shelving units and just the right air of sophistication. With direct access to the backyard through a series of French doors, Anna Nicole's former primary suite was also situated on the main floor, providing her with direct access to the courtyard, as well as a master bath with a soaking tub, shower, separate sinks and a lengthy vanity. Upstairs, the other bedrooms are all nearly as large as Anna Nicole's. In fact, one of them is big enough to fit two queen-size beds while still having enough space left over for a sitting area. Also featured on the grounds are a series of detached oversized garages, one of which features a private guest suite up top with a separate entrance and a coffee bar. There's also another detached guest quarters that includes a games room with a Wyatt Earp replica bar and a card room. As serene as this home is on the inside, the outside Side is even more tranquil thanks to its hot tub and waterfall combo, not to mention its courtyard with a lagoon style pool and lighted tree. And if that's not enough to convince you to spend some of the sweltering Texan summer outside, then how about this? A fully loaded air conditioned indoor outdoor kitchen. But before you get all loaded down with Texas barbecue, maybe you might want to check out the sports court to make room for all those calories. This part of the estate not only includes a basketball court, but a fully loaded gym with a sauna too. Last but not least, the highlight of this home, especially for Anna Nicole, was the 13 stall barn facility that housed her favorite animal, horses. As much as Anna Nicole adored living here, it didn't last for all that long. Following the death of her husband and her subsequent bankruptcy case in 1996, Anna left the home behind never to return. Afterwards, the house was left in a state of neglect and eventually damaged when local high school kids broke in and vandalized the place. Anna would sell the home in 1998 to a man named Mark Myers, who then updated the property with a number of the features I just mentioned, including the outdoor indoor kitchen and the sports court. Mark sold the home in 2017 for $2.8 million. As for Anna, well, after filing for bankruptcy, she headed to Los Angeles, which is where we're going to next as well. About seven years after Anna sold her Cypress estate, she purchased the first and only home she ever bought for herself in Studio City, California for $1.3 million. 
This 4,700 square foot property would eventually house the Anna Nicole show. And through two seasons of America's guiltiest pleasure, Anna would invite her fans into her family home with its five bedrooms, six bathrooms, hardwood floors, 20 foot ceilings, giant windows, fireplace, weight room, gym, and a long outdoor swimming pool. Unfortunately, Anna only got to live in this home for two years before her demise. After she passed Larry Burkhead, the man who was proven to be Anna's daughter's father through a long-lasting paternity suit, moved in to take care of their child, Daniel Lynn. For the next few years, these two made the house their own while maintaining a few touches that kept Anna's spirit alive. Inside, custom chandeliers hang in the home's enormous entryway and sprinkled throughout the house is some of the actual furniture that Anna formerly owned while living here herself. If that's not enough to remember her by elsewhere, you'll discover a massive painting of Anna still hanging on the walls in a place of prominence. As for the kitchen, it features wooden cabinets, granite countertops, and more importantly, views of the nearby canyon to enjoy from a cozy breakfast nook. Then there's the home's master suite, which includes a balcony on each side, as well as 20 foot vaulted ceiling. Just down the hall from there is Daniel Lynn's room, painted in all pink, including a tiara with veils that hangs over the twin size bed. Daniel Lynn would only get to enjoy this home for so long herself. After living here for a few years with her father and his former lawyer and lover, Howard K. Stern, gained the court's permission to transfer ownership of the home to his name so that he could sell the property and give the proceeds to Daniel Lynn. And that's exactly what happened. With the sale of that home finalized, Anna's real estate ownership would officially come to an end. But there is one last place I'd like to check out with a special connection to the former starlet. I'm talking about the Bahamas. After falling for her lawyer, Anna Nicole moved with Stern to the Bahamas in 2007, where they lived in a gated oceanfront home on New Providence Island. The Bahamas is where Anna would give birth to Daniel Lynn, only to then tragically lose her son Daniel to a drug overdose just a few days later while he was visiting his mother and sister in the hospital. Following that tragic outcome, Anna retired to her island home known as the Horizons Estate in the hopes of finding peace and quiet to raise her daughter. But it didn't really work Work out that way. Scandals and chaos followed in her wake, and one memo later released by the local government would read, not since the category four Hurricane Betsy hit the island in 1965 has one woman done as much damage in Nassau. That's a veiled reference to the havoc Anna unleashed when it was revealed that she allegedly provided $10,000 to the immigration minister Shane Gibson after her residency application was approved in just one month. Critics pointed out that the process normally takes a year and claims that Smith was treated like any other applicant were shattered when photos were published of Smith and Gibson in a bedroom embrace. I'm not exactly sure what's going on there, but it certainly does seem like Anna and Howard might have greased the wheels with some sort of bribe. And Gibson, well, he was forced to resign in disgrace. Then following Daniel's death, the Bahamas coroner's court came under fire for being unable or unwilling to provide a cause, leading to rampant speculation that the government was once again protecting Anna. The scandal forced the government to disband the court and fire the coroner. In the months to follow after her passing, where Anna Nicole would be buried became a hot topic issue with Stern insisting that she wanted to be buried in the Bahamas next to her son. Eventually, he won that argument and Anna was laid to rest at Lakeview Memorial Gardens after a service was held at the nearby Baptist church. The funeral was largely seen as one of the biggest events to ever happen in the Bahamas. Smith's casket was draped in a pink blanket, her favorite color, and taken the short distance from the chapel to her resting spot as 300 guests looked on. Each one of those guests guests then wrote a personal note to Anna, which deposited in her casket along with pink flowers and her late husband Howard's ashes. Security guards were then placed on a 24 hour watch over the grave site after nearly 300 visitors in less than a week destroyed some of the cemetery's landscaping. As for the home Anna and Stern shared, well, not much is known about it, but according to a report emanating out of local 10 news in 2019, the home was hit hard by Hurricane Matthew in 2016, leaving it a former shell of itself and in a state of disrepair. It's also been tied up in a legal battle since Anna's passing and no one's lived there since 2007. In a sense, the story of Anna Nicole Smith's real estate portfolio reflects the tragedy of her own life. So much potential ultimately lost without anyone having had the proper amount of time to really appreciate it. Here's hoping that wherever she is right now, Anna Nicole has at least found peace.
Thanks so much for watching and before you head out, consider answering the following question. Which of these homes do you think was best suited for Anna's personality? The woman has a complicated legacy and everyone seems to have different thoughts when it comes to her story, so I'd be interested in learning what you think. Otherwise, like, subscribe, and turn on your notifications to make sure you never miss a video. My name's Kara. If you'd like to join me on another tour right now, then stay tuned because coming up, we'll look at the homes of the late Brittany Murphy. Bye. Whether it's because of her untimely and tragic passing here or simply because it was the last place she spent her time, the Hollywood Hills mansion of the late Brittany Murphy has always been a topic of conversation. Back in 2003, the budding young actress dropped $3.85 million on the 8,000 square foot property and soon after moved in with her mother Sharon. Back in 2009, an era that feels like a lifetime ago for some of us, former actress Brittany Murphy died in her Hollywood Hills home at the age of just 32 years old. Also, Michael and I have dropped our own house tour of our new home that we moved into this year, so go ahead and subscribe to our personal channel if you want to see where we're living and more of what we're up to. In these videos, we don't reveal any addresses, and even though I've done a house tour of my own place, please do not show up at any private residences because it's not safe for anyone. To that point in her young life, Brittany was a promising actress who had starred in hit films like Clueless, 8 Mile, and the romantic comedy Just Married alongside her former boyfriend, Ashton Kutcher. Yet a sudden mysterious illness would bring her entire life to a tragic close in the very home that she lived in. But the hits didn't stop there. Just five months later, Britney's husband, Simon Monjack, would also be found dead in their property, passing away in an equally mysterious manner. HBO Max released a special documentary that took a look at the end of this former starlet's life titled What Happened Britney Murphy, looking at the unusual coincidences that connected Britney's death with that of her husband. Not to mention what their massive $3.85 million property they lived in at the time might have had to do with it. Hey guys, it's Kara back with another exclusive house tour here on Famous Entertainment and today we are going to look at the former mansion of the late Brittany Murphy. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit me up on Instagram to chat and now let's get into this video. Prior to Britney Murphy moving into her mansion in the Hollywood Hills, the home had another famous tenant, Britney Spears. That's right, the Princess of Pop used to own this property located on Rising Glen Road, sitting atop the Sunset Strip. Back then, Spears was still dating Justin Timberlake when she reportedly had something of an otherworldly encounter that would encourage her to sell the home and move out as quickly as possible. Spears' former makeup artist Julianne K once explained to the hosts of We Need to Talk About Britney podcast that, I'm just gonna say, this is really weird. She calls me, I had my friend do Reiki healing on her. He had come up, I guess she'd had a crazy partying weekend and needed to relax. He left and she swears to God that he opened up some spirit portal or something and these bad spirits had come in and they were like trying to push her down the stairs or something crazy. Yeah, I'd say that sounds pretty crazy indeed. Eventually, Spears' feeling about the home grew so morbid that she left and wound up staying at the Casa del Mar Hotel for weeks, never to return. Unfortunately, Spears never mentioned the unsettling feelings the home was stirring up to the woman she wound up selling it to. To Brittany Murphy. Murphy dropped $3.85 million on the property in June of 2003 and soon after moved into the 8,000 square foot premises with her mom, Sharon. During those last few years of her life, Murphy never claimed to see spirits or experience supernatural forces of any type, but she always seemed to be uncomfortable when staying there and felt like something wasn't right. For instance, in an interview with The Hollywood Reporter shortly after Britney's passing, her husband Simon would tell them media outlet that Murphy did her absolute best to avoid the home at all costs. He told them, she absolutely hated the Rising Glen house. Every time we would drive up Sunset, Britt would say, please, can we stay at the Beverly Hills Hotel? I'd say, honey, you've got to be realistic. We have our house, a 10,000 square foot home. We're gonna stay in it. Rather than being straight up haunted, Simon would tell reporters that Murphy believed the property was quote unquote unlucky. And in the months leading up to her death, she was preparing to move out and head to New York State where she was hoping 
that she and Simon could start a family. According to her husband, the only place that Murphy ever felt safe in the house was in the ensuite bathroom, where she spent hours reading magazines, singing to herself, and writing poetry. This little biographical detail only makes it all the more tragic to realize that when Brittany took her final breaths, it would be in this very spot. In the early morning hours of December 20th, 2009, a brief power outage took place at Brittany Murphy's home. The 32-year-old actress went out onto her balcony to get some fresh air and looked down to where her mother was sitting just below her to say, Mom, I'm dying. I love you. Moments later, Murphy would collapse on her bathroom floor as her mother rushed upstairs to be by her side. 911 was called, but after going into cardiac arrest, Brittany Murphy passed away. Following this shocking turn of events, there was wild speculation over what had happened. Was drug use involved? Maybe an eating disorder? In February of 2010, the LA's coroner office would officially rule Brittany's cause of death to be pneumonia. Secondary factors included an iron deficiency efficiency while Vicodin respiratory infection medication and antidepressants were also found in her system. In short, Brittany's death was ruled to be an accident and the county's chief coroner would state she had been sick for at least two weeks. Had they taken her to a doctor or hospital, it would have been treatable. After her passing, Brittany's mom Sharon would inherit her daughter's fortune, including the home where they lived. And while Simon had reportedly intentionally been left out of his wife's will, his former manager claims that he was still able to snatch up around 80% of Brittany's money from various bank accounts before his own death. Speaking of which, in a shocking twist of fate, Simon's body was found in the very same home where his wife had died only five months earlier. On May 23rd, 2010, he was discovered by his former mother-in-law, Sharon, in an unresponsive state. And by the time first responders had arrived, Simon was pronounced dead. According to those that knew him, Simon was battling dependency issues with drugs like heroin. And his own mother, Linda, would reveal that her son had a slight heart attack only a short time before Brittany's own passing. She also claims that her son suffered from seizures. Primary cause of Simon's death, like Brittany's, was ruled to be pneumonia. There were also some prescription drugs in his system, but not enough to cause an overdose, apparently. Because Brittany and her husband died of the same condition in their family home, there was a theory floating around that so-called toxic black mold could have been the cause. Los Angeles County Department of Health originally confirmed that this was a theory they were investigating, but it was later dismissed after the coroners stated that there were no indicators that mold was a factor. Since Brittany and Simon's unfortunate and mysterious deaths, their former home has changed hands multiple times. According to property records, the home was first sold by Sharon at a massive loss for just $2.7 million in 2011 after nearly two years of struggling to find a buyer. Then in 2013, the home was torn down and underwent a multi-year rebuild with its new developers aiming to create a sprawling contemporary home. When it was finally placed on the market and sold again in 2017, it went for the gigantic sum of $14.53 million while also bearing no resemblance to the old house. Today, the home measures an incredible 9,400 square feet while boasting five bedrooms as well as eight and a half bathrooms. The main suite is a 2,000 square foot room all on its own and includes not one, but two walk-in closets and two ensuite bathrooms. If I'm being honest, that last addition might have been arranged so that whoever is living there now doesn't have to wonder if they're standing in the very spot where Brittany Murphy took her final breaths. I don't think that's anyone's idea for a great way to kick off your work day. But with its open floor plan, high ceilings, rooms that open completely to outdoor lounge spaces, all of which offer unobstructed city views, not to mention features like a home theater, massage room, wine cellar, infinity pool, and spa, this home is looking to throw off its former horrific reputation. It was most recently sold to its newest owners in December of 2020 for $11.59 million. I'd like to know if they've ever gotten any funny feelings while living there too. But until we find that out, we'll just have to theorize over what really happened to Brittany Murphy and her husband Simon, and whether or not their mysterious Hollywood address had anything to do with their untimely passing. Well, that's going to wrap up this house tour. Let
Let me know your thoughts on Brittany Murphy's one time home and this whole tragedy in the comments down below. Thanks for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't. Follow me on Instagram to chat and I'll catch you all in another video. Bye.